I'm rather old, and uh, I like uh, expressing share, my share, share. sharing my feelings. Sir. So I'm so sorry I couldn't uh, welcome you one by one. Uh, we don't have enough time, uh, and so I'd like to welcome you all, all together. I hope you will feel my appreciation. And I'm warmly welcoming you. First of all, a warm welcome to everyone. And I wish to thank the speakers of the afternoon. Thank you so much for coming over, making today's event possible. And then a very bad news for you. This introduction will take about 10 minutes more than anticipated. I apologize for this inconvenience. And then we heard Xiaomi's president introducing the topic. I'm too celebrating the 20th anniversary of, the, of our association. Xiaomi is celebrating its 20th anniversary plus two days because it was set up on March the 13th, 1999. It is a society, our society. I'd like to go back to what was not said. I think that somebody's going to say it tomorrow. The objectives, the main goal of Xiaomi, we have essentially had two. First, to set up a society that would uh, provide uh, some co complementary culture. And the second goal was uh, eliminating uh, or, or, or dismantling the wall existing because this complementary medicine and the orthodox, and orthodox medicine, uh, Xiaomi is uh, different from other uh, parent uh, societies uh, or sister companies. Uh, I wrote a paper last month. Uh, This problem had an immediate lemma. Dismantling the wall meant obtaining the scientific validation of complementary therapies. This sounds easy, but it is not. What happens tomorrow, uh, Dr. Giarelli will uh, take you into that. OK, to make it short, scientific validation means a, re a retrospective one, a prospective one, a very vital, very, a very vital homeopathy. And uh, Carthesia, Carthesianism characterizing orthodox medicine. But uh, these two philosophies are opposites to each other, the one excluding the other. And so speaking on integrated medicine and dismantling the wall means adopting uh, the so-called binity. This uh, term, you, I think it is uh, familiar to you. But the problem uh, in philosophical term is very difficult to solve. So adopting binity, has it represented a problem for the development of, of our society? I'll give, I, I will be answering. Provided uh, the founding members uh, realize that, but if they have, uh, they just did not care. That's uh, the way they overcome the. They have overcome the problem. They simply did not take into cons into consideration. But the rest of the homeopathic world was not so happy with that. When Xiaomi was first created, uh, somebody spoke uh, of a terror attack. Uh, to Hanemanian thought, but others said it is blasphemy 
providing this anathem to everlasting anathem to its founding members, Basha, Xiaomi, when it was when it was created, uh, this uh, created a crisis uh, for many uh, orthodox home- homeopathy uh, using al- allo- allopathic uh, uh, drugs. simulating a new dialectic in homeopathy, and then it promoted the concept of new cemeterial facilities by the international homeopathic community. And then finally, something happens. Uh, everything is calm. La Mecca, Kaaba, of the homeopathy, changes its name into London Hospital for Integrated Medicine. And this is calming everyone. First of all, in London, this is what they do in London. But then in the Integrated Medicine in London is, is translated into some rushed medicine very, very far away from the first concept approved 12 years before. Founding members uh, have grown old together with me. We're tired. Very different from, from the way we used to be. But uh, at that time, too, it would have been difficult uh, to think uh, that adopting Binity would uh, lead to the organization of a conference like today, or a session like today. But please watch out. Arguing on Binity is trivial. The The real problem is the definition of a dimensionality ladies and gentlemen, homeopathy still doesn't have it. You may agree or disagree. You may say that you're good. This is one thing. But if you just look at the response of the outer world, and then I will stop. At this point, I would like to ask you, and I would like to tell you that there is one more thing. If speakers, not very young, if they just started writing about their lives, what should they be writing? It's not. We're not at the end. But considering that they are not very young either, they should be speaking about results. This is my first take-home message. You should start writing that you have been lucky or that you have had the chance to be so. What does it mean? I would like to, okay, I have so many things to tell you. Take it easy. It takes long. 1595, Shakespeare wrote, na, wrote uh, Midsummer Night a Dream uh, that was uh, very much uh, criticized. Uh, it was like uh, metamorphosis. Uh, this, uh, cri- these critics uh, uh, were educated at Croce Gentile. Science is just a superstructure. That's what they say. And as a result, they are brave enough because they underline words like Hippolyta and other uh, characters. Uh, the Amazon's queen. This story shows that it is more than fancy or fantasy or fantasy images, uh, it is something admirable, strange and admirable. Why are these words important? Uh, 
it is the equivalent of what we studied during high school. And this, this was show the beginning of scientific revolution. Francis Bacon, uh, as he wrote this paper, he, he wrote a novum organum that is completely changing the relationship between man and nature and creating the royal society. But why, what is important in these words? Because these words highlight three aspects of human condition that were not considered before. Man is afraid and is self-defending. Today, 6,750 languages are still being spoken today. The second thing is that this weakness brings him to prefer the search for an absolute certainty. A few weeks ago, Conchetta and myself, we used to wrote on a blog and I said, uh, actually, it is true. Flom Chell, and this brings me back to the president's word, is uh, examining uh, your mail, trying to improve your souls uh, with some uh, papers. And I said, this sounds crazy. OK, let's go ahead. The third point by Hippolyta, to think of the world being ready to subvert any certainty is one of the most beautiful adventures for man. Simone Weil wrote, this unlucky girl, one of the most important scientists, or philosophers, sorry, the speaker is correcting himself. She wrote, in these words, there was a challenge to the curse of Genesis. A concept, if you think of your original scene, this concept is dominating Western culture. And then Fabrizio De André, the singer, wrote these words. And then Masaccio, the fall. 1.5 kilometers from here, he painted the fall in 1424 with the angel, controlling sinners, living with a sword in his hand, representing the autograph of the misery of Western condition. Simon Weil says, for those uh, thinking uh, it would be possible to subvert any certainty, it is also possible to leave any new uh, heaven uh, or Eden uh, or Garden of Eden. This heaven or this paradise is what people create, uh, and nobody can be expelled uh, from this Eden uh, apart from apples, uh, apples or no apples or snakes uh, hanging over trees. I was born in Florence, so this sounds uh, natural to me. We can make some comparison between uh, uh, the birth of uh, Renaissance and the birth or creation of a Siomi. But please watch out. The two movements uh, preach uh, the new, but its inspiration is classic, and in the case of uh, Siomi members, this classic is represented by academic uh, culture and by the adoption of heuristic uh, philosophy of the similar. Vitalism of the Hahnemannian thoughts of the 19th century comes beyond the railway station 400 meters from here in Via Orto degli Uccellai with the Plato Academy. You, you might think that this sounds trivial, but it is not. Please remember that both movements go back to revaluation re of man, which means humanity in medicine. And please watch out. 
This happens in a world where patients are just an example of human body according to or as reported by progressive medicine or the so-called evidence-based medicine. And so why, why am I saying that you have been lucky? Xiaomi members, uh, <laughs> they're trying to create a new treatment option uh, or method which is more human, <laughs> more rational. But if they reach their self-awareness, uh, they can live in their paradise. Uh, that's why it is important. Uh, If you go to my children, if you ask my children, they will tell you that greed is just an instrument in the logics of life. What is logical is dimensionality. It is not a Xiaomi problem, but this is a problem for homeopathy. Homeopathy has these uh, dimensional features of democracy. It is dissent-based. In, in the homeopathy world, there are too many people uh, speaking freely. Not only do they do that, uh, in, in doing so, or by doing so, they show their own cognitive distortions. Uh, in psychological and medical terms. When we hear of homeopathy, it's not the, the, the gender of angels. But please remember this aberration, which is physiological and not a human society based. The problem is that when uh, these statements uh, are collected, uh, accepted, and supported by a group. They become pathological. And this pathology affects uh, the whole community of homeopaths. Uh, silly hypothesis like water memory quantum mechanical effects, uh, what, uh, speaking about biophonons, uh, they simply do not know what they're speaking about. All this stuff, uh, from month to month, uh, we read about this uh, with uh, papers uh, published. Uh, and we know that uh, the international scientific community is laughing uh, about that. Uh, and uh, homeopathy uh, is the magazine representing you. Uh, but from a scientific viewpoint, uh, they simply do not know what they're speaking about. You know, I was speaking to you many years ago, and there was somebody speaking during conference and saying, watch out, if I throw my keys into the Seine River, there is like some footprint, some print, and I, and I can recover these keys in Le Havre. And I was thinking of Apollinaire. He wrote this uh, poem, Mirabeau Kul La Seine. The print of keys thrown front of the bridge. Otherwise, he. Hans, Hans Jonas. You know him. You know the German edition, of course. Das Prinzip Verantwortung. 
Watch out, he says. These silly things are clashing deeply against the achievements or the assignments of doctors and the reliability of a medical practice. This is the analogy. If we follow such statements, the possibility of reaching some dimensionality is precluded. At this point, I'd like to add something. Such attempts, because usually there are crazy people saying these things because they want to win a Nobel Prize with two consequences. First, the potential transformation of your university degrees into toilet paper. Because sooner or later, they will send you away. And then the potential annihilation or quenching of your dream of creating a new Garden of Eden. So, ladies and gentlemen, as Heraclitus said, since the way up and the way down is only one and the same, instead of the heaven, you can build up a hell. As Sandro Botticelli painted in 1480, 300 meters away, close to Piazza Santa Maria Novella, where his office or studio or workshop was. Siomi is made up of wise people, and these are statements have never been considered with great attention. Sometimes we've, we have made some mistakes. I was telling, I think that once I told you about my personal experience, I have spent a very happy life until this thing happened to me. And you know what? A YouTube program and Bernardini around looking for a chapel because he asked me to exhibit uh, this painting. Uh, because he was uh, sent away from the society. Acupuncture, they managed to do so. The effect of acupuncture is essentially due to the large increase of adenosine content. What did the homeopaths do? If you ask some from the board of directors, it is an embarrassing answer. But if you ask the managers of other societies, what happens? Let's get back to the point. Why is, is homeopathy self-limiting? Homeopathy was developed without any interest towards the chemical nature of the homeopathic drug. Homeopathy was developed not taking care of what was happening at a biological level after a drug was taken. Nobody ever cared about that. This cannot be accepted any longer. But if you consider, and I would like to report the words of Bella Vita, Homeopathy has an holistic approach for the holistic approach of homeopathy of as a healing system going far beyond the identification of specific information. Ladies and gentlemen, it is self-explanatory. No argument, no dispute. These sentences are nonsense. And who is showing that they are nonsense? We've come to a very tragic comic situation, homeopathy is used by more than 500 million people. Therefore, it is successful. It means it works. But every day, 
There is some interview, some paper saying that it is not useful. Starting from March the 1st on a sort of Inticotore daily, they said not only is it an, uh, useless, but it is also uh, poisonous. Most scientists prefer being, uh, you, you see, a parrot. Uh, they, they prefer showing that they just don't care. But nobody tries to verify or to check uh, whether such statements are true or false. And so, let's get to the point. According to scientific evidence, we are going to show that homeopathy is just pharmacology of microdoses where molecules interact with the biological sublayer according to the rules you've learned at your university, like a f drug to receptor interaction, uh, giving rise to hormetic responses uh, justifying the CMI law. CMI. This is very, very important, ladies and gentlemen. I have a paper by Professor Calabrese published in January. Professor Calabrese, Calabrese is with us today. And you see, this is to, to be shown in the folder, in the conference folder. It is just three pages. This concept, this concept may have a very, very large social impact, both for the revolution of treating methods and then some measurements uh, increasing uh, people's lives. Uh, so what are we doing today? We try and see what is contained in a drug uh, from a chemophysical viewpoint, uh, Professor Bellare. And then we see whether this uh, drug has a biological activity. And if it does, uh, We think, we will think that competent people will use it in, in therapeutic terms. Uh, we are very lucky because we have uh, two great uh, scientists today. I hope you will enjoy following their presentations. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, you see this paper. This is a paper that I wrote. Uh, I'm one of my favorite authors. Uh, summarizing. Uh, the main concept of what is going to be said today. OK, you can call Garattini tonight and say, listen to me, you have a black cat. Watch out when you leave. Naturalmente, poi ci sarà. And then uh, the old lady, the old uh, homeopath uh, or homeopathic lady, we have these new concepts. Uh, and then the young homeopath, uh, this is what you say, this is what you say, like Mrs. Uh, Castelli. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, okay. You can think whatever you like. You might think that uh, children are carried by storks. Uh, do as you like. Uh, you may believe in that. Uh, I'm old, I and mean, I'm very sorry to be old, uh, because this would have uh, promoted some uh, uh, genetic exchange with the other sex. OK, I'm finished. Today we're speaking about uh, laboratory concepts, uh, but medicine is something more. Medicine is a science. It is the expression. The de it is de developing in society as the expression of many things. Uh, thought, 
thinking habits, education, economics, politics, and devotion. Official medicine. This traditional medicine in a country where if you have a backache, you use a bear on your back, sitting on your back. At this point, you need to realize uh, that when a, th a theory of complexity teaches you that when a complex is due to many factors, uh, if uh, some of this is changed, uh, the whole system will be, will be following this direction. Uh, since uh, political decisions or financial decisions in medicine, uh, desires uh, of users, uh, and especially influence of way of means of information, they are very, very important. This is our situation. The institutional and academic power is not symmetrical. We are lucky because we have Professor Luca Poma being very good at communication. He's a communicator, and he teaches how to say things. And he will show us uh, that uh, when you have this counterweight, uh, like uh, the, the founding fathers of the Constitution, uh, through information, uh, it gives rise to some epidemic of awareness, uh, allowing us to change the world. Thank you. Thank you.